All right, since I know it's just the boys now, listen, Cody Curry here, and this is 110 SAS Actual. The all new RMR HD, it's finally here. We are gonna get you an in-depth look at this guy. Get your eyes behind the glass so you can formulate your own opinions about this optic. We're gonna talk in depth about the new features this RMR HD has over the previous models. It has a larger window, it has two new reticles in it, a top-loading battery, automatic dimmer and brightener. There's a ton of new technology packed into this RMR. It's not simply your screw-on dot and go to work. And then, an old-fashioned 110 SAS actual durability test. Will there be pink spray paint? I guess we'll have to wait and see. I will tell you this, I am going to be hard on this optic. I'm going to be very crucial about this optic. If it breaks during any point in this time, I'm going to tell you. Just like all my other videos, guys, my opinions are unbought and unpaid for. What I see on these optics and these guns that I feature on this channel, they're just my own opinions. They're my own trash opinions, okay? They might be good for somebody. They may be bad for somebody else. That's okay. If I can help one person make a good purchase, well, I feel like I've done my job. So we have two parts of this episode, guys. The first part gonna be the informational side, getting your eyes behind the glass. The second part, old fashioned durability test. So which part are you gonna see first? Fast forward to that, watch it all. I don't care, it's up to you, Kings. They're both awesome. You should take a look at both of them to make yourself an educated opinion on whether or not you wanna shell out the money for this new optic. It's expensive. It's twice the price as most Holosuns and other competitors. It's a very expensive optic, okay? So watch this video. Take a look at it, see what you think, formulate your own opinions before you make that purchase, okay? So here it is, gentlemen, the Trijicon RMR HD. This is a brand new release from Trijicon for 2023. To be honest with you, Trijicon really hasn't done much to their pistol dots over the past, well, decade. While they have dropped a couple new dots like the SRO and the RMR CC, they haven't exactly been in first place as far as technological advancements go. The miniature red dot and pistol dot site market, well, it's pretty flooded right now. And that's kind of a good thing because that drives innovation. When you have companies like Holosun that's offering a product for half the price of Trijicon with a lot of features, well, that's gonna make somebody say, hey, we need to step our game up. So this is where the RMR HD comes in. Now this is my own garbage opinion. However, Trijicon RMR has always been the gold standard for pistol dots. It's durable and it simply just works. Now is it feature rich? Well, no, not exactly, but that could be part of the reason why it just simply works. So let's talk about this thing. The very first feature I'd like to discuss is the new reticle system. You have your choice between a regular dot and then a circled donut around your existing dot. This is a nice feature. It's very simple to change. All you do is hold in both buttons for a few seconds, press up or down for the battery brightness to change the reticle, and leave it there for about 10 seconds. After your 10 seconds goes, you lock in the new reticle. Giving users a choice between which reticle they prefer that's pretty nice. Well, this has kind of been an industry standard for most LED dots on the market. Trijicon is just now catching up on that. So here's my take between the two reticles. For the simple crisp dot, it's going to be your best choice for accuracy shooting. Something I have found with the big donut is, well, I get this thing in my head that when I get it on a target, if the target is inside that circle, I'm just going to pull the trigger. You know, I'm not really looking for a crazy amount of accuracy. Unfortunately, that's just how my brain works. When I have the small, simple, crisp dot, I feel that I make a more concise, more accurate shot because I'm actually aiming with the dot. Now that's not to say one is better than the other because honestly, it's 110% preference. If I had to say one is better for a certain scenario, I would say that the circle donut is super ideal for those close, quick target acquisitions. How it plays out in my head is I present the pistol, okay, target's in the middle of that gigantic donut. Okay, super cool, rad, boom. Let's pull the trigger. When it comes to speed with like target acquisition, I do feel that the donut just does it a little bit better because you have such a large reticle that's gonna help you reference exactly where you're at on your target. But when it comes to those precision and accurately placed shots, I just want the dot. So what I found is the further you get away from your target, the more that big donut reticle is going to cover your target. And just because your target is inside of that dot does not mean you're gonna hit it when it comes to a distance, unlike a target that's say like five meters away versus 25 meters. I feel like it just kind of adds a whole new layer of difficulty to your aiming system. You really have to focus on that center dot to place your shot exactly where you want it. 
And that donut is a lot of information in your face. You know, with a handgun, it's supposed to be a quick, fast weapon system. So I believe the donut can definitely aid in like close engagements to your targets. I feel as if the further you get away, the less and less it aids in that sight and picture acquisition. And to reiterate one more time, guys, this is largely a preference thing. You know, what works for me may not work for you. You might get this thing and say, hey, that dude was stupid for saying that. I believe the exact opposite. That's okay, whatever works for you. The second biggest change to the HD is the new top loading battery system. Everybody universally hates the fact that you had to take off your red dot site to reload batteries. So Trujicon went ahead and fixed that for us. All you need now is a flathead screwdriver, a coin, the end of a spent cartridge or a live one, doesn't matter. It's very simple to get that battery cover open, reload it, and then go back to work. The next big change, and probably my most favorite, is the fact that the glass is now larger. There was definitely a few people that would complain and say, hey, this glass is just too small. I wish I had a larger sight picture, a larger window to look through. Well, Trijicon listened again. They made it a little bit larger. I feel now that it's like the perfect size for a pistol dot. It's not this gigantic mailbox sitting on top of your gun. It's small enough to make sure that you know it's not this huge footprint, but it's also large enough to give you a good sight picture and field of view. Simply put, I found it's just the perfect balance of size on a pistol dot. Now the next feature is a little bit more high tech. It's the auto illumination. So what it does is it's gonna measure the brightness of day or night and automatically adjust the brightness of the dot. Now I know I can't be the only one here who shot their pistol during the day, put it back in the holster, use your carbine for the rest of your work, whatever, go to draw that gun again and it's, you know, a little bit darker, sunset or even pitch black, and it looks like you have just stared into 1,000 suns, ruining your night vision and leaving a red dot in the center of your eye for the rest of the night. Well. Not anymore. There's a small sensor on the front face of the actual housing of the RMR. It's just a small little sensor about the size of like a pinhead. And that's what controls the auto illumination. Now, if you're not that guy and say, hey, I don't wanna do that. I wanna be in 100% control of the brightness of my dot. Well, you absolutely can. There's actually a specific series of buttons that you have to press and that's it. You have 100% control over the dot brightness settings. All right, boys. So we know a little bit more about this HD optic. Let's see how it holds up to the 110 SAS torture test. So let's give this thing a good little scoop of of uh, some mud. Safety first. Don't try this at home. Let's see if we can just take our finger and swab it. There it is, look at that. Gotta get it in there nice and deep like. Ready to go to work, huh? And a saw and a board, and I'll cut it. I'll climb up a ladder with a hammer and a nail, and I'll nail it. Well, we worked so hard to build a little house together. In the snow, or the rain, or the ice cold wind, whenever. No matter what the weather, we're together. Look at this. Dot. Perfect 
perfectly crisp. Oh, it's a finish for the screw out? Sure. Fish. I bet this thing still works perfectly fine. Arts and crafts time with 110 sass. Cannot buy you a better finish than what? Let's see if this thing's actually still holding zero. Well, we worked so hard to build a little in? house together. In the snow or the rain or the ice cold wind, whenever. Let's just keep going. No matter. Go on, the weather. Just a tiny little, just a baby little dent right there. It's just a chip, just a little chip pattern. So that's a wrap. I absolutely positively cannot believe this thing. Not only does it still function, it holds zero. There's not even a crack in the glass, a small chip from where that bird shot hit it. I absolutely cannot believe this thing. I genuinely do not think there's an optic on the market, let alone a pistol optic, that can withstand that kind of damage done to it. Not only holds zero, but still function. The glass is still perfectly fine. Yeah, is there a small chip in it from where it took a shot from buckshot from 25 yards away? Yeah, so what? It's still perfectly fine. The reticle, still nice and crisp. Change back and forth between them, no problem whatsoever. The housing, yeah, it's a little scratched up, but that's it. It's just a little scratched up. It's not even bent. You know that housing, it's just an aluminum alloy. And the fact that it was able to take a gunshot, the fact it was able to be ran over, drug, ran over twice at that, used as a hammer, whatever, it's absolutely unreal. Again, guys, my opinions on this stuff are completely unpaid for and unbought. I just do this for fun, it's a hobby. And to be so impressed with a piece of kit, I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive. I mean, I'm not sure why I would consider anything else. I mean, yeah, it's expensive, there's options that are much cheaper, but you know, if it's something that you trust your life to, why would you even consider cheaping out? I know I'm certainly not. So boys, that's it. That's a wrap on the HD. There is no if and buts about it, this thing works. It's durable, and it is a valid use of your funds. If you wanna make that switch, I do think it's worth it. Now, do you have perfectly fine functioning RMRs, you know, the first generation? Maybe you should consider it. That's up to you guys. If you wanna consume, more power to you. But I'll tell you, this thing, with all the new features that it does have, it's a pretty fantastic piece of kit, and it's a great upgrade over any of the existing Trigicon offerings. Gentlemen, I appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, drop a comment for the YouTube algorithm gods, and we'll catch you next time.